Next is a task number three with the allow AS. So as you know that by default, BGP has a loop prevention mechanisms by the router detecting or if it sees its own AS as part of the AS path contained in the route, it would totally drop that route because it would basically perceive that as a loop. So it shouldn't be receiving its own routes. But with the allow AS, what it allows you to do is to relax that rule, actually overwrites it and allow router to accept any routes that has its own AS in the AS path. Okay, so what we have to do here is to configure R6 to prepend an AS100 to its loopback 10 through 12 and advertise that to R4. And we also have to make sure that R4 prefer these routes coming from our R6. Okay, so what we're going to do from R6 is to advertise its loopback routes to R4 with the AS100 prepend. And then we're going to make sure that R4 prefers it. So we're going to use a, I mean, there's a number of things you can do, but one of the attributes that you can immediately use is the wait command. So it's what we're going to use is the wait attributes. And that way we're going to make R4 prefer route from R6 instead of the route that's coming in potentially from R3 or R2. And then that route will also be advertised to R2. Okay, so first we have to reconfigure or configure our R6 to prepin. So you first come up with the prefix list for R6 loopback. So we'll call it R6 underscore LO. Permit 6600 slash 22 less than or equal 24. Then we have a route map to R4. Permit 10 match IP address prefix list. That looks like I didn't make a typo on the name. So let me know that. And then it's R4 match IP address prefix list. R6 loop back and then set AS path prepen 100. And then we'll allow the remaining routes. Router BGP 200, neighbor R4. Route map to R4, out. Clear IP BGP, out. Okay, now getting on to R4. Instead of doing all the prefix list and route maps just to match that route, we're just going to go ahead and configure a wait command for R6 as a neighbor. And that's going to make R4 prefer all the routes being received from R6. Okay, so wait, just pick a large number, 65,000. Then do clear IP BGP, 6600. 255.255.0.0 and you do clear IP BGP 162.16.46.6 inbound. Okay, so now we do a show IP BGP reg 200. You can see that R4 now prefers R6 for most of the routes that it's learned. Okay, so what it means is all these some of these routes will be forwarded to R2. So we can also reg 100. If you look at the R6 loopback addresses coming from R6, you can see that the AS path or AS100 has been prepended on those routes. And if you go to R2, just to see what happens to that, show IP BGP 6600, 255.255.0.0, longer. R2 currently is only learning those routes from R1, and that's because when the route comes in, R6 loopback interface routes comes in from R4 to R2, it has the AS path of 100s in them, and so R2 is saying that it's seeing its own AS in the path, and due to the loop protection, it drops those routes. Okay, so the only direction that R2 is currently learning the routes to R6 loopbacks are from R1. Okay, and if you do debug IP BGP updates, and we can try to, on R4, clear IP BGP, 123.2 out. Let's do a route refresh. Let's see if we can catch the route being denied. We do a U all and let's try to find right here. It receives the update for the 6600 and these routes are being denied because the AS path contain its own AS. Now what we need to do is to configure R2 to accept routes to R7 loop back 10 through 12 from R4. Okay, now we're going to overwrite the default loop prevention on R2 so it can go ahead and accept those routes. So under router BGP 100, you do neighbor 162.16.123.4 and the command that you want is 
right here, allow ASIN. And then you can also specify the number of occurrence. So for us, we only have the AS100 show up one time. So it's enough for us to just type in occurrences one. But obviously, if we were to prepend more instances of the AS100, then we would have to adjust that number according to the number of occurrence of that number. Okay, so now that we have that command in, we can do the show IP BGP one more time for those subnets. You can see now the router R2 once again learned the R6 loopback routes from R4, even though those route contains the AS100, which is its own AS in the path. Okay, the use of this command is usually not common. Under the certain circumstances, you might need to use this as a workaround. But for the most part, if your network designed properly and in the normal operation state, this command shouldn't even be used because a router shouldn't be learning routes that contains its own AS. Okay, so that's our task number three. Our next task number four with BGP timer. Here we have to configure our one to advertise keep alive and hold time, uh, five and 15 seconds respectively to his neighbor. Okay, so by default, all of the BGP, uh, Cisco BGP routers has the keep alive of 60 second and the hold time of 180. So there will come times where you want to adjust or lower those values so that way your BGP convergence happens sooner. So we're gonna hop over to router R1 and under routed BGP, command to adjust the BGP timer is timers, BGP, and here we have to specify keep alive. You said we want five second, and then the whole time of 15. And here we get a warning from a router saying that since the whole time it just specifies less than 20, we better watch out for pure flapping. So what we did is just to adjust the timers values at the global level. What we can also do is to do that at the neighbor level. So let's say you pick a neighbor and you want to lower the timer just for that neighbor. Then there's also a timer option for that. But since our task specify to lower the timer for all of the neighbors, then we can just simply do at the global level. Okay, so even though we have already entered the command, it would not take effect right away because the timer values are negotiated when the BGP first come up during the session establishment, it's just part of the parameter negotiation or capability negotiation. So what we're gonna to have to do is to hard clear all of the BGP sessions just to force all of the routers to renegotiate the timer. So what we have to do is to do a clear IP BGP asterisk. Now I have to give it a second and then we can do a show IP BGP neighbor and we can just look for the word keep alive and the word neighbor. As you can see, R1 has three neighbors, and that's R2, R5, and R3. And since we made the change at the global level, you can see that all of these timer, both hold time and keep alive, has been lowered to 15 and 5. Okay, even though the other sides still have the default value of 60 and 180, when the negotiation happened, the routers on both sides will settle with the lowest value that they're trying to negotiate. In this case, it's 5 and 15. Okay, and we can also jump over to R2 just to do exact same show command. Keep and neighbor. Okay, as you can see, R2 is only used the new lower keep alive and hold time only with R1, while I still maintain the default keep alive and hold time for the remaining peers. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward for our task number four. Now for our final task, task number five with BGP authentication, we have to configure R1 and R3 to perform MD5 authentication using a password Cisco. So this is just to give additional security to the BGP sessions and make sure that every single BGP packets are MD5 authenticated and no other routers can just simply send a BGP packets to our routers and try to negotiate a session. Okay, so we're first gonna configure R1 with the authentication and the router BGP 100. Again, it's a neighbor command. Specify the peer for dot three, and then the command you need is password. Okay, so we set a password of Cisco. Now let's go over to router R3, and then do a show IP BGP updates, uh, uh, actually debug. If we just show IP BGP summary on R3, you can see that the R3 sessions to R1 has already gone down, and on, on R1, we've been receiving a message with the router complaining about the 
BGP packets received from R3 are not MD5 authenticated. Okay, so we can fix that quickly on R3. And then route BGP 200, neighbor, dot one, password, Cisco. Okay, there you go. As soon as we do that, the neighbor comes back up. Show IP BGP neighbor, let's say to 16. 123.3. Here we have the current state of PGP state to be established now that we have the password configured on both sides. Here, as you can see, the enabling a authentication or password between BGP peers is very simple. So you should always have that as a best practice on all of your BGP configuration. And that completes our task number five. So some of the commands you've seen in this lab are less commonly used in the production. But it's still good to know what those commands actually do, especially if you're studying for your CCIE lab. Here's that wraps up our video on BGP miscellaneous features. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.